happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to The Guy Dawson Show at WCOBM.com, the world center of broadcast media. My name is Guy Dawson, and I am the managing member of Classic Communications, a full-service media and marketing company. If you would like to bring greater recognition to your business, your organization, or yourself personally, please contact me at 702-845-6129 or visit our website, ClassyCommunications.net. We are broadcasting to you live from the Gene Woods Racing Experience here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Just a stone throw. Throw stone. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't throw anything today. <laughs> I didn't wow. get the memo, but there you go. From the Las yeah. Vegas Strip, and uh, the illustrious Quan is back in the studio. How are you, Quan? Very good, the fabulous. Are you enjoying the show with, on, on your radio talk show yesterday? And I just learned something. You said that right, New Year's resolution is different from your goals. Goals are more practical, reachable. So I'm going definitely I need to ask you this question. What, uh, what's the difference to you? I really well, learned something. Well, yeah, there's no difference really between a resolution and a goal. I just think that goals are... I'm more likely to hit my goal. I think there's so many connotations with resolutions. Everyone gets all wound up for these resolutions, <laughs> right, that you're supposed Definitely. to do every year. But why do you have to wait? Why do you have to wait till New Year's oh. to decide that you're going to make change in your life? So I think that's one of the reasons why they don't work that well is because everyone procrastinates. Yeah, oh. they, went, they wait until, until New Year's. So you're already starting in the mindset of procrastination, and then you get started, and then most people don't, their resolutions don't last more than about. Two months. I think it's like about 50 January, days. January, February, yeah, you cancel your generation. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I mean, I, I, I do set goals, but I don't call them resolutions just because it just doesn't seem to work all that well. If you're somebody out there who has maintained a resolution, by the way, through an entire year, please get on the chat line and tell us about it. We'd love to talk with you. Sounded good. Yeah. 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 We did a lot of Mandarin Chinese on the radio yesterday. Wow, you remember some? Uh, what well, you say? Uh, Happy New Year! Uh, <laughs> 新年好. <laughs> 新年好. I was going to say, yeah. Gong Hei Fa Chui. Okay, that's a Cantonese. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh, so oh wow. Oh, By the know, way, so. Angelica Salazar is in the studio. She is an artist. I am. Welcome Gong to the Guy Dawson Show. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. So, you speak Cantonese? No, I don't. No, I just speak English and Tagalog. Oh. oh, but you know, I've seen you know every Chinese New Year that sign is everywhere. Just that's how I know, <laughs> but I don't speak that. It's a good word to learn. Go Kai Fa Chua in Cantonese. So happy yeah. New Year! Yeah. Well, welcome to our show. Angelica is a artist who has <laughs> really burst on the scene recently and been doing art shows and things. And she's actually a good friend of a friend of mine from Toastmasters, Rick Moore. Yes, Rick Moore is my mentor. He's been amazing, and he's introduced me to you know people that would help me promote, you know, what I do. So it's been an amazing momentum. Yeah. yeah, and so what made you get into art? I know that when we were talking, this isn't something that you've been doing throughout your life. I know a lot of times no, people No, it's definitely been a surprise to me. Um, you know, it wasn't part of the plan. It was really just, I was going into, like I would say a transition in my life uh, where I was losing friends and a romantic relationship. And I was just bored with, I guess, a lifestyle, and I needed to do something that was, you know, that could make me listen to my own thoughts, I guess. And then that's when I found my love for art, and ever since then I've been painting. Um, it was only a year ago, around this time last year, when I started. So it also was a surprise to me, as it is to, you know, my family and friends. They're like, oh, I didn't know you can do that. And I'm like, I didn't know either. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've never, a, throughout your life, you've never had any no. any artistic drive until... Until, until a, a year, year ago, ago, I would say, yeah. Wow, I mean, so. I've, I've seen your paintings. It is really phenomenal. Thank if you. you have the opportunity to check out some of her paintings, they are definitely not uh, the paintings of someone who you think just picked up a... Uh, a paintbrush but some people are just well, thank natural you. Thank they you. have natural talent and I would say that in your case that's what it would probably be it's just something that you you're naturally you. good at well Thanks. you should have a couple pieces to show from I here. did I do oh, yeah. you do yeah, we've got some things on drive <laughs> yeah, let's how about we we see a couple of the the pictures that Angelica has oh look at that Those are my recent pieces that I've done, so. Is there a state of mind that you 
you get into before you start painting? Oh, I mean, well, you know, my pieces are always my thoughts and emotions. I just translate it into a hard copy. So mm-hmm. definitely, like, my pieces are out of my, you know, my mentality and my emotional state. So, like this one. <laughs> I named this one Emotional Hostage. Emotional Hostage? Emotional why, did you, hostage. why did you name it Emotional Hostage? Well, you know, a, a lot of my inspiration come from personal experiences. So... What is it, the medium? Is mixed media? It's mixed media. So I have acrylic and I also play with like um, molding paste or pumice just for texture. So my pieces are always, are, they're not flat. You mm-hmm. know, when you, you're able to touch them, there's texture on them. For instance, the face, the blue face, what, what's the messages? The you, blue face? Um, yeah, trying I, to show. I um, named that overthinker. So it's it's um, been thinking someone who's overthinking and you just kind of like I don't know get lost in your own thoughts and you stress out or you know it could be a good thing. It's that, this one right here, yeah. This is like a lost overthinker. Right? Overthinker, yeah. And I am an overthinker, so. So is a blue color special to you or s- some kind of show me some kind of a mood or this is I your have favorite? A f- I have a phase. Right now I'm in my gray phase, so I paint with a lot blue. of grays. I started with blue, um, but right now, yeah, that's one. Did you I, take I, lessons at all or is you just picked up the brush and started painting? I, yes, I, well, I didn't take any lessons, but I did practice You know, I'm a self-taught artist, I would say, but I definitely spend a lot of time sharpening my skill set. So I started painting sceneries, but then I have evolved to exploring or experimenting with textures, and now I paint with knives and obviously the traditional paintbrush. So I've evolved from painting sceneries to translating my own thoughts and onto a hard copy. So, so which artist is your idea, um, idol? You, you, you um, got my favorite artist influence. is Gustav Klimt. But we have d- very different styles. But I love him. <laughs> so yeah, I, I can tell your style is like um, half abstract. It's definitive abstract. So you can still see you know, that there's a person there, but yeah. they have distorted um, faces and kind of like weird movements, I would say. For instance, a picture like this, it's a couple back to back. Are they mad at each other or? They could be. Well, it's a, I titled it emotional hostage. So Uh. it's kind of like maybe you're in a destructive relationship that you cannot leave. You know, it's like Uh, you're attached to. Attached. Yeah. Yeah. And that was from a personal experience. Uh. The past. Thank God. Oh, it's, it's extremely <laughs> interesting. Very talented you are. Thank you. The way you're showing messages. Thank you. How so did you much. learn all the terminology and things? Because like you're saying, this is something that you just got into recently. And terminology, you mean art or just, t- you know, um, yeah, making up with the titles? Yeah, um, well, in art itself, there's a lot of terminology. I know we were talking about this Over because time, I, I was I, writing yeah. a lot with about artists a few years ago. and. It took a while for me to figure out all the lingo. Just yes, of the it took a while for me too. But you know, being surrounded with other other artists, you learn so much. So, mm-hmm. but um, I write titles myself. So I titles write. To your I art. write too. Yeah, I write too. So. Oh, so you. So there's another artistic form of yeah, expression. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's such a great combination. Thank it's you. A mind the processing. Thank also you. Also express on the heavens and the. It colors. comes hand in hand, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. I've, I've, yeah, I've learned that that a lot of people who are writers, they may start out as writers and then they become painters. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to take a short commercial break, Angelica. And when we come back, we'll talk more about your blossoming art career and take a look at uh, more of your pictures. Angelica Salazar is an up-and-coming artist, and uh, <laughs> we are having a great time interviewing her today. We'll see you in a few minutes with more of The Guy Dawson Show. Aren't they beautiful?